how do you incorporate her into the way society is organized since she clearly has far more privilege and power than her but that's looking at you looking between the two you wouldn't be able to tell and it's, it's all about the optics, optics. And, and that's and how america works work. what it's all about the optics yeah what what does financial stability have to do with optics this is just pure critical race theory Thank you to everyone who watched part one of this video. Um, I posted it probably two days ago or probably yesterday. Um, Y'all said, what's the original link? The original link to this is on a channel called SOC119 and the video title is called Exploring White Privilege. And today I'm gonna to finish this video, man. This topic is extremely interesting. Let's get it. You could still be like, I oh, know, but I got the script, but I still have privilege because I'm white. It's like, hang on a sec. So go back. Give me one way in which you have white privilege. Your whiteness gives you privilege. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I haven't, <laughs> like, no. I haven't can't had think a of situation, answer. at least in my life yet, where that has come into play, where I've been against someone who's not white. And it was like, I needed a different opportunity. But, like, for example, like, job opportunities, I'm sure that m more in the future would necessary would probably presented be presented to someone who is white rather than someone who's of color um i don't know what we were talking about financial aid and stuff like scholarships and stuff no. um being able to go to penn state um <laughs> what because um y'all i posted this video yesterday and she said to be able to go to penn state when there's literally black people right here at the same college like somebody commented that I was like, I wasn't even thinking about that. It's literally black people in the frame, like at the same school. They're all in the crowd. <laughs> it's just funny to, to talk to consider. And if y'all didn't watch the one I posted, um, she's talking about scholarships. There are no scholarships for, um, um, what is it, low income white families at Penn State. And he actually says that. But let's finish the video. I mean, I, I really haven't been put into a position yet in okay. my life where. Okay, that has but can, can I say to you all and to everybody else, as far as I know, Penn State has no scholarships dedicated for poor white people. I don't think there's a single one out there. Yeah, right now, I can't receive more financial aid this semester, so I have like a $2,000 bill that I gotta figure out how to pay in like the next two weeks, uh -huh. which sucks, um, but yeah, I mean. Okay, yeah. and you, okay, so hang on real fast, we're gonna come back. How long would it take you to pay her two thousand dollar bill? Instantly, Puerto, she's part of what? Puerto Rican. Yeah, I I wouldn't have to worry about that. But um, so in my opinion, like white privilege is a real thing, and I really do think white people have an advantage over minorities. However, there also is a big divide between the rich and poor, and I think that's a whole separate issue. So, and, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And yeah, so I feel like you're less privileged than me, because. Well, like I don't have money, but my parents have money, and it's nice, so I don't have to worry about certain things that you have to. Like, so, like, how much money? I don't, want, I don't want specifics, but like, a lot of money. Your parents are really rich. I mean, they're wealthy. Like, yeah. Like, you could call them right now and say, "I need two thousand dollars because I got to give it to my classmate." And well, no, would... they make me work for things. That they no, no, I got you. I got you. But, but you could, if you needed two grand, you could get it. Yeah. Okay, dude. Just trying to hook you up, my friend, all right? <laughs> Look, so how do you, so how do the three of you make, she's Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, Puerto Rican, so you have, like in the United States, you have Native, Amer Native Americans, right? Then you have Black Americans, then you have Puerto Rican Americans, then Mexican Americans, and so on. So, like, how do you incorporate her into the way society is organized? Since she clearly has far more privilege and power than her. But that's looking at you looking between the two you wouldn't be able to tell and it's, it's all about the optics and that's how america works what I it's agree. all about the optics i agree yeah what what does your financial stability have to do with optics this this girl the, the girl in the blue shirt is talking about she needs two thousand dollars by the next two weeks or her class is going to get dropped which if you don't know if you don't pay your bill by the by a specific time i think i don't know the exact date they drop your classes. You're basically kicked out of college. They take away your housing. And this um, Puerto Rican girl is like, well, I've never had to experience a problem like that. I've never even, that problem has never crossed my mind. 
even if it was to happen to me today, I can call my parents right now, literally at this exact moment, and get $2,000 right now. And he said, okay, so if you judge these two situations, how could you determine like who's more privileged and who's in a better position? They're not, she's Puerto Rican and she's white. And this girl said, well, it's all about the optics. She's about to get kicked out of school because she can't afford to go there. And you're talking about it's all about the optics in terms of privilege. I can't believe this. This is it. This is unbelievable, bro. This is unbelievable. Yeah, like we don't know their intersectionality yet until they open their mouths. But when we look at you and we make an assumptions, and I'm not saying myself, but how America generalizes, we don't know that you have to pay $2,000. We don't know that your family's wealthy. Oh. So, I mean, at the end of the day. What? Oh my How does that work in your favor? At the end of the day, looking at you, oh my goodness. you're still white. Yeah, but okay, so listen, man. So hang Gosh. on, hang on. <laughs> what, you, what I just heard you say was that in the end, right? So tell me if I'm wrong here, right? But what I think I just heard you say was it really in the end, she's as well off or better off than her. What I'm hearing you say, though, and you, I want you to, to you to respond to this, is that she's still, she's still better off. In what ways is she better off than her, man? Like, in what ways? Like, I don't see from any the, way in which she's... From the visual, like, before from you the get to visual? know them, before they open their mouths, what do you assume? What? What? Okay, this is just pure critical race theory. This is, from, okay, from what I've learned about critical race theory, it's like the subconscious bias that humans have and everything in society has an underlying racism that's what i've learned what she's saying matches that definition to a t what she's implying is that off the pure optics no benefit no other benefit in her life is better she has less money she has less freedom she grew up in a more poverty stricken area she did not grow up in a two-parent household if y'all didn't catch that it's been part one but just off the strength of her being slightly more white, her life is more privileged off the optics. So that doesn't even make sense to me. That's pure critical race theory. And I can't I can't get behind that, bro. And I'm not trying to be like one sided here. I'm really not. I'm the most fair person you can watch on this joint. But that's just that's just not right, man. That's not true. That's not right. She's not better off just because she's white. That's not true. Come on, man. You're we're gonna go. So now what I'm doing is I'm sitting out, okay, I'm sitting out here, all right, bro, I'm sitting next to you, okay, all right, I'm sitting out here, and I'm just the average person who's thinking about this stuff, right, and I'm like, man, you have not made a convincing argument, because her, what's your, what's your name again? Alexandria, but Alexandria, Alex. Alex, I'm just like, Come on, man. You, your framework doesn't account for the fact that Alex's family is rich and her family. Rich. I'm just gonna. But say they're rich. two separate issues. Okay. Yeah, we're talking about race what? and white privilege, and we're talking about the wealth inequality um, gap. Oh my. White privilege is also about wealth and inequality. They're all together. I don't know how you could separate them. I'm not talking about. Are we talking about? Well, she won't get followed. What? What other separation could there be when you're talking about privilege? What's the most privilege you can ever have in America? America is literally the capitalistic backbone of the world. So if you're using that, the biggest privilege you can ever have in this country is being rich. So when you say, okay, you have more privilege, that should be automatically implied that you have more power, you have more resources. Those are the automatic assumptions when you say you have more privilege. So for you to sit here, a rich Puerto Rican girl saying, well, yeah, I am richer than you, and yes, I have more resources than you. I have less stress than you, less worries than you, but that's a completely different issue than having white privilege. How? How? Like, I, and I'm not trying to say, I, I, bro, I really want to understand. How is that different? How is that different? Like, what? where is it? What is the exact privilege? Is it just like the inherent biases people have? Like, when they see you on the street, they might think something. Where is the privilege? I think having two bands on standby from a loving family is more privileged than being white. That's just what I think, but maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. Mm. Hey, y'all, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. In a store by a security guard, but, but you will. 
It's like, come on, man. White pri- so that's how you're defining white privilege? So, so I would say open it up because we're throwing this idea around here. It's like, damn. Because she... I'm, and by the way, I'm just put, I'm We're now just... I'm playing... I'm just having the conversation. Like, you got a lot of people sitting right here in her seat that are going like, I, I, I'm not... I'm not... See, I'm not getting this. And you got a lot of people sitting in her seat who a person of color who's got a lot of money and then we're looking at her and going like like dude all the people in your town are going to look at her and be like oh yeah i'd rather be me the white person than her how many people in your graduating class would say that well i graduated from my high school it was probably like 40 percent white people i moved to easton which is like a little different than my uh like hometown, hometown. yeah 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 um there are some racist people, but most people wouldn't. No, 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 but I'm just asking. Can you, want to res- can you also respond? Yeah, yeah I got you. I, mean, gonna... I was just going to respond to the whole, like, white privilege thing. I feel like white privilege, it goes in, like, different aspects, like she said. So I feel like for the aspects regarding, like, financials and finances and, like, monetary things, I feel like just statistically speaking, white privilege is basically just saying, statistically speaking, if you're a person of, like, Caucasian background, your family is more likely to have general... Generate, uh, generational wealth that's uh, gonna allow you, you know, to be privileged like her and to get in college. But again, there's all. <laughs> hey y'all, comment down below if your family has generational wealth. And she said this in the first part too, and it it just made me think. You being white doesn't mean you're automatically more prone to generational wealth. Maj- about ninety nine point ninety nine percent of people do not have generational wealth. So when you use this argument, it's like it's really futile because for one, the majority of people will never have generational wealth or they do not have generational wealth or they did not come from generational wealth. The majority of any race in any place on earth do not have it. So when you're arguing you being white leads to a stronger chance of having generational wealth in America. I mean, I don't even understand how that's a real argument. Because even if that were true, what percent of people even have generational wealth in the world? What percent of people even have generational wealth to begin with? A thousand people out of the whole country? So how could you sit here and argue that as a backbone to having white privilege when the majority of white people in America do not make more than $60,000? Majority of Americans do not have generational wealth regardless of your race. So have something that have an argument that affects everyone if you're going to argue that this exists. And I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying, like, if you if you say it does, have an argument that really supports it that's backed by the majority, not the minority of people who are super well-off and wealthy and rich and white. And by the way, there are black people who also have generational wealth. Anomalies, like, you know, sometimes your parents or your great-grandparents got lucky. Like, my great parent, my grandparents came from Jamaica, started a business, and then they, like, became, like, millionaires, like, in New York. So there's always anomalies, but what? the time, it's going to be... So you're arguing this, and your grandparents are literally rich? <laughs> oh, my God. You can't make this up. But you really can't make this up. What? Oh my gosh. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. She literally... This can't be real. So she just said, there's always anomalies. For example, my life is an anomaly. My great-grandparents came from Jamaica, became super rich by having a business, and that's the reason I'm able to afford to go to Penn State. Well, and even though this white girl can't really afford to have her $2,000 bill paid, and I can, and the Puerto Rican girl can... I mean, she still has more privilege than me. You literally cannot make this up. This is what she just said. If y'all didn't catch it, watch this. If you're a person of, like, Caucasian background, your family is more likely to have general genera- uh, generational wealth that's uh, going to allow you, you know, to be privileged like her and to get in college. But, again, there's always anomalies. Like, you know, sometimes your parents or your great-grandparents got lucky. Like, my great parent, my grandparents came from Jamaica started a business and then they like became like millionaires like in new york so there's always anomalies but at the same time it's gonna be difficult like it's difficult oh my so goodness. her herself like if she steps in a place you know her employer knows nothing about her background and these two women come into one job market and you know the employer is someone of like basic you know american views 
are like uh, these are commonly seen in America. Like one person is more likely to get a job than the other. So it's it's okay. like in finances and it's like. Okay, listen, man. So one thing you just said, oh your, so your grandparents became millionaires in New York. Well, like like yeah. a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, so right there, the moment you say that, you understand, if I'm her, if I'm, I'm you, I'm just like, and now I'm in a class and we're going to start throwing words around like race inequality and white privilege and this and that, and I'm you, what do you think, she, what do you think she's thinking? I feel like, I mean, she'd probably think, I feel like it's still, it's still weird though, because it's still like a non, that's just one person in my whole entire family that allowed me to be where I am today. I got it. But like on average, like there's going to be percentile wise, there's going to be more people, more white people, like of Caucasian background who have like two parents, two grandparents of that same background. And that's where the privilege comes in. Okay. So listen, man, let me just come, come back. This is, this would take a long time to air out. Absolutely. Like you got to look at the numbers. We're going to look in at this class at not, not just individual examples, obviously numbers. But what I'm trying to point out is like, first off, this guy right here, dude, the, the white guy, he's, you know, like we throw these words around and we throw stuff around and we take classes like 119 and we throw words and we expect everyone to get the white privilege stuff. And it's like people aren't getting, it's not landing. It's not going to land. It just doesn't land and until we, it, it, <sighs> That was so sad, man. I'm just hearing this girl talk and talk and talk about how the other white girl has white privilege the whole time. Her family are millionaires, so she's a millionaire because her grandparents probably are paying for her education. They're rich. There was a Puerto Rican girl saying her family, she can get two bands right now if she wanted to. So she has money. And they are still in the same breath looking at the 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 other young woman who needs two thousand dollars in two weeks and literally can't afford it comes from an extremely broken home in a broken area literally grew up in straight poverty and grinded her way to success to get to penn state when there's no um undergraduate scholarships that affect um white people from uh, lower income areas and she's still grinding her way to get there and they're still going to look this girl in the same in her face and say you still have white privilege the arguments that they brought up was basically culture issues within the black community for example she said if you are white you are there's a higher chance that you'll have two parents in the household my thing is what does it have to do with white privilege like literally what does that have to do with white privilege what does the culture behind marriage in the black community have to do with white privilege because marriage rates in our communities weren't always low for example when we were experienced arguably some of our most racist times in america um, during the Jim Crow eras, we had higher levels of marriage in our communities. Is racism getting more uh, prevalent now than it was then? Is it more racism now? Because marriage rates are declining in our communities. However, it's less racism. They are not. They are not equal in that in that in that sense. So why are you equating cultural issues to the white community? It's just extremely disrespectful to me that you're going to sit here. You are your family are millionaires, and in the same breath, look her dead in her face and say she has more privilege than you. How dare you? Ugh, I can't believe this, man. But yeah, if you have any more suggestions for me, comment down below. It's LFR Jojo, and I'll see y'all next week.